Thanks for joining me for this edition of the Church Security Answer Man. I am so glad you're here with us today, and I really enjoy interacting with you and really hope to, my heart is, in really trying to help you uh, make your church more safe, help your team be more safe, whatever your position is within that or your interest within church security and making your house of worship safer. Today, I want to talk about what we can do in the coming year to make our church safer. What can we do? Uh, you know, I want to talk about some things that, uh, uh, you know, can tighten up our security, some things you can evaluate, you know, uh, trying to get better at what we do and trying to improve how safe our church is and making goals to make it more safe, uh, whatever that is, whatever that looks like to help you uh, improve your security ministry and the security at your church. So. I've got some suggestions here that I want to make, throw out for your discussion, your thought process, uh, if you will, to help improve safety and security over the coming year. The first thing I want to talk about is creating a single entrance into your church or minimizing the number of entrances. And I know that that's a struggle. You know, our tradition says we're open. And we're welcoming everybody and to have people find a locked door here and there, I understand that. Uh, it kind of goes against tradition, but today is a new day. So I'm constantly harping on that idea of having a single entrance or minimizing those entrances. So, you know, if you can cut down from five entrances to three, from five to two, or if you can get to one, uh, you know, that is great. At my church, you know, we have, we keep things locked up. We have one entrance, fortunately, where uh, we're not a huge church. Uh, we also talk about people that have keys. You know, they'll tend to, I want to bring stuff into my classroom or this is a closer entrance. So we make some allowance for that up to 20 minutes before church starts. And we're watching those things as a security team. But after 20 minutes before church, before the first church service or before the service starts, you cannot then be coming in and out of those doors. You gotta walk around. Even if you're carrying a heavy load, we will help you, but you gotta come in the main entrance after 20 minutes uh, before the service starts up until after the service is over. So very important. So we wanna be in control. We wanna maintain control and to be able to do that, we need to minimize those areas because we need people watching those areas, uh, if you will. So. The next thing we can do, uh, along with minimizing the number of entrance points, is making sure we have volunteers, we have security team mem members that are watching those entrances. We're watching the lobby, anything that's unlocked, even patrolling the areas that are locked to make sure they stay locked. But anything that's unlocked, we try to put somebody in that area to watch those. And sometimes that means you know, maybe you can see two places with one volunteer. You got this door here, and then down the long hall here is another door. And maybe I can watch both of those from one location. We want to try to figure out ways that we can do that so we can have people watching those. You know what another thing is, is can we five minutes into service, can we lock a couple of those down? Maybe go down to one entrance. We're not locking them to where people can't escape if there's an emergency or a fire or something but we're making it to where people can't come in and out wherever they want within the church. So people that are thinking about bad things are not sneaking into an area. So, you know, monitoring entrances and monitoring parking lots. Those are a great area for us to get better at as much as we can monitor those areas, you know, and, and even getting into the parking lots as much as we have people that can do that. And we can stagger things. You know, we have we have an usher who's also on our security team. And so that between his duties, when we're shorthanded and he's working on the team as well, he has to close the auditorium doors when the service starts and he has to help take the offering. So in between those, we can take him with another person and run them out through the parking lot. And then he can come back in and uh, do the offering. And then they can go back out again. And so uh, uh, looking at whatever you can do to piece together that schedule. But in, in the coming year, we want to really try to improve on 
watching entrances, getting those minimized, and watching the parking lot. Because that's where stuff is happening. Or if we have a problem person, somebody's got a mental health issue or somebody that's angry today, where are they coming from? They're coming from our parking lots and sidewalks into our entrances and hopefully that's a minimum of one or two entrances to where we can monitor that and then we can look for that person and screen and monitor those uh, potentially uh, problem areas like the parking lot and entrances next is an encouragement to your team and you know i'm open like me i'm always trying to grow the team and find different people that can uh, help with things like medical issues or security issues or whatever those things are that my team, myself and my team might have to deal with. So I wanna encourage you coming up on this year to try to get to know people better within the church, ask questions, get to know, do you have anybody that's new to the church or somebody you just overlooked and didn't realize it that has medical experience or law enforcement experience or security experience? Maybe they're currently doing those jobs or you know, have they been in the military in the past? These are all great people to help you with your security ministry and your safety issues, medical issues. And I want to encourage you to do that, you know, to be getting out, getting to know these people, trying to identify them as resources uh, to your team and to the church. And I also say, don't stop with that. Go out into the community and see what are additional resources, you know, talk to the local law enforcement, fire departments, you know, and find out what else you can use to help protect your church or your house of worship or you know understanding more about those response systems as well could even be a plus so digging into that a little bit more is something i would encourage you to do uh, in this uh, coming year next on my list is making a plan and and i'm specific about making a training plan for the whole coming year and and this is important you know are you going to do training every six months are you going to be able to do quarterly training? When are you going to do firearms training if you have an armed uh, a team? Or when are you at least going to go with them and watch them shoot? You know, when can we get together as a group and go to the local firing range uh, and see how these people are shooting and make sure they're able to shoot accurately, hit the target, those kind of things. So I'm encouraging you to line the schedule out ahead of time. And the important thing about that is get that plan made so that you can be planning and, and pre-planning for those events. You know, if you know you have a training on a certain date six months from now, maybe you can start working on a guest speaker, maybe somebody that's got some credentials that could maybe even give you a great training for your people, whether it's in communication or dealing with mentally ill or what that might look like. But now you can schedule this way out and make plans for it and talk to people. It's good for your people to know. If you want them showing up to your training, especially if you get more than three or four people on your team, you want everybody to know what the schedule is gonna be like, what the expectations are, so that they can also set that time aside in their schedule so you get better attendance to your trainings from your team as well. You don't wanna be hassling with putting on training and then not having people there that need to be at that training. And you know, uh, in that process, make these plans Make, every, make sure everybody knows the schedule. And, uh, uh, and you know, this helps you know when to, when to schedule stuff, plain and simple. It's a great tool for you to be able to plan for things. Your people can plan. And then if you've got materials you need, you can get those materials together. If you're trying to get an expert, then you can make plans for that expert. And overall, it just, everybody knows what's going on. And that's the awesome part of that making that plan and uh, uh, letting everybody know about it. So it makes it so much better than last minute planning or, oh, I forgot kind of thing. So, and the last point in this show that I wanna talk to you about is trying to improve communications. Setting that as a goal for this year. Looking to improve communications between maybe your different teams, between greeters and ushers and security if you're on different teams, or maybe between security and leadership or security and kids ministries. Whatever that looks like, how can we improve communication? 
How can we improve maybe making our rounds with those people during uh, services might even be part of that. Also, how can I improve communication with local emergency responders? Letting them know you have a team, letting them know what the components of your team are, if they're armed or not armed. Improve that communication with them as well. And, you know, and, and maybe help them get familiar with through communication with your facility as well in case they ever have to respond. And finally, if you don't have good radios or you don't have any radios, I would look at trying to improve that. Because as soon as we get separated, even if there's only two of you, as soon as you get separated, depending on the facility layout or the footprint of your facility, you may need communication. Or if you're a one person, one woman or one man team, you need to be able when you walk out in the parking lot to be able to call somebody maybe that's working the sound booth or giving them a radio with an earpiece so that they can at least hear that you need some help or you got a problem out in the parking lot. So I would work to improve that either get radios or work to, you know, we can all do better in those radio communications is important, especially as we grow and improve. So maybe even looking at getting uh, uh, newer radios or better radios, uh, if you will. Well, that's it for this edition. And I'm so thankful you're joining me for this training. If you liked or got value out of this, I hope you'll hit a like button or subscribe to our channel and so that we can communicate more. Leave me a comment. Please leave a comment because I enjoy communicating with you and I try to answer every comment that, uh, that, we, ha that we get. And I want to help you, especially with this episode, get better for this year motivate people get better for this year wherever you can and don't forget the hub of our information the hub of our operation is at churchsecurityanswerman.com go over there and there's free stuff there's all kinds of lists of stuff there's formal training free training forms that you can get and uh, we'd love to have you come over there and take advantage of that site uh, as well so thanks again for joining me